Hello again everybody and welcome back. This is the third video in our five part video series where we're going to build up to car counting in OpenCV as the finale video. And what we're going to take a look at in uh, this video is we're going to take a look at a pretty basic prediction algorithm and we're going to um, try to predict mouse movements just as a basic uh, mechanical example of how we can check our prediction algorithm. And we're going to use that prediction algorithm as part of our um, blob matching in the fourth and fifth videos. And if that doesn't make sense to you now, um, please view the fourth and fifth videos when I've completed them and, and it should kind of all come together for you then. But in any case, let's take a look at our mouse move prediction algorithm uh, in this video. So we're going to go ahead and fire up Visual Studio and then we're going to go to, uh, let's see here, GIT, HUB, MICRO, microcontrollers and more. And I'll link this in the description below. And I'm also going to link the prerequisites to this uh, video in the description below, which are the um, installation and configuration for OpenCV tutorial and then the first two parts of this video series as well. So uh, if we go to mouse move prediction and we're looking for this here OpenCV3 mouse move prediction CPP and there's uh, only two files in this uh, repository here. This is the readme, pretty straightforward. So we can jump right into main.cpp and then I'm going to choose raw to copy and paste of uh, to copy and paste from, I should say, out of here. And here's Visual Studio. So we're going to go to File, New Project. And we can name the project pretty much anything that we, we'd we like. So we'll name it uh, Mouse Move Prediction CPP. And then you might want to make sure you have here chosen uh, Visual C++ and Empty Project. Uncheck those. Choose your preferred location. Choose OK. And then when it comes up, we're going to add main.cpp. And there we go. Right click, Add New Item and main.cpp and then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste in main and again there's only the one file in this project and we're going to get a number of red underlines because we haven't set up our OpenCV references yet so we're going to change this to x64 and then project and again I explain how to do this in more detail in the uh, installation tutorial so please uh, view that if you have not already so we're going to go to visual c++ include directories and edit and we're going to paste that in, and then we're going to go to the library directory, which is going to be right here, library, edit, and paste that in. And then we're going to drop our library into linker, input, and additional dependencies, and edit, and paste that in as well, and then apply OK, and all our red underlines should disappear. And we don't need to copy anything, copy anything into the directory for this project. So let's go ahead and run it, and then we'll take a quick look at the code. So I'm going to have to sort of move the windows around here a little bit. Bear with me. So I'm not sure how well this is going to show on screen. But if um, as I'm moving the mouse around, the white crosshair is the most recent actual position of the mouse and the blue crosshair I'm trying to get my mouse in a good position here and the blue crosshair is the predicted next position of the mouse and if I move the mouse around relatively quickly you can see the blue crosshair is always a step ahead and is a pretty good prediction for where the next position for the white crosshair is going to be and if we'd like to actually really kind of quantify this a little bit better rather than just seeing things move around on the screen if we swipe from let's say for example from the top left of the screen to the bottom right at kind of a moderate pace so maybe about like that and then we click over here and do control a control c and now we can stop the program and then we can bring up notepad and then we can paste in and if we go backwards until so we're going to the very bottom here then if we just go backwards until we get to where we see motion again so that's actually back quite a ways okay there we go so here's where we were off the bottom right of the screen and then if we go up just a little bit here's where we're off the screen at the top left so as we start to move the mouse across the screen here for each of these we have the current prediction and then the current position rather and then the next predicted position so we can simply compare the next predicted position to the actual next current position to see how well our prediction algorithm is working and we're going to find that this algorithm works pretty well so here we have um, as you can see for example the x value is only off by one and the y value is only off by three so that's a pretty good prediction uh, here's this next one so you can see the mouse is moving 20 or 30 pixels at a time pretty good amount but yet the predictions are pretty darn close so this this one here the x is only off by seven and the y is only off by four and this next one worked especially uh, well also, so the X is only off by 4 and the Y is only off by 1 and so on. So you could, uh, if you wanted to come up with a fancier prediction algorithm, you could test it this way and see 
um, if you could find something that maybe would work better for a particular purpose, but for what looking what we're looking for today, this works pretty well. So uh, let's take a quick look at the code to wrap this video up before we go on to actually implementing object tracking. So um, we have some function function prototypes here, and then we have our global variables. They're actually all just constants except for this one here, mouse position, and I'll probably explain that first. For those of you not familiar with um, mouse movements in OpenCV, what you do is, well, let's take a quick look at main here, is first we declare our blank image, <clears throat> and then we declare um, our vector of mouse positions, and then we declare our single point which is the predicted mouse position then we have this named window image blank and then we call this here set mouse callback with image blank as well and when we add that line in what's going to happen is each time the mouse uh, a mouse event occurs we're going to get into this function here so the first thing we do is check what was the event if it was a mouse move then we simply update this mouse position global variable with the x and y coordinates of the mouse at the time that the event occurred which were given uh, as parameters to the function here each time that this runs and so that's going to update this mouse position global variable which we declared up here to essentially always be the current mouse position and as soon as we jump into our infinite while loop, then we're going to add that to our list of actual mouse positions. And then we're going to call our prediction function here, predict next position, to predict the next mouse positions. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but once we have our prediction, then we simply show, at this point it's really just bookkeeping, we show the current prediction and the current position rather, and the next predicted position as you saw when we took a look at the output earlier. And then we draw our two uh, crosshairs, the white crosshair for the actual and then the blue for the predicted. Then we show the image, pause for a moment to let the operating system redraw the screen, and then we blank the image for the next time around. And uh, the only other function we haven't taken a look at is draw across, but that just simply draws two lines in a cross pattern, uh, which we saw when we ran the program. So the only remaining function to look at is our prediction. So um, what we do when we go in here, and this is pretty straightforward, um, if there aren't any positions so far. Well, if, if there's no positions, we can't do anything with it. But um, if there's one position so far, we can't really predict it. So we just return what the current position is as the next position. And then if there's two, three, or four previous positions, we come up with a weighted average. But let's look at the most common case, which is if, if there's five or more positions. So um, for example, suppose the number of positions was 10. Then we would have uh, 10 minus 1 is 9 here. And then we would have 10 minus 2 is 8. And then so, in other words, we're comparing the x value of position 9 to position 8, position 8 to position 7, position 7 to 6, and so on. And what we're doing here is we're weighting the most recent of those four changes by 4, the second most recent by 3, third most recent by 2, etc. And that gives us our sum of x changes. And then we're going to divide that by the number of weights that we've done here. 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 10. And then that's going to give us our estimated change in x position. Then we do the same thing for the y. And then we simply um, change the most recent position. Or I shouldn't say we change it, but we add that difference to the most recent position. And that gives us our predicted next position. So this is a really simple basic uh, sort of weighted average of the previous positions algorithm to get a predicted position but as you saw it works out pretty well so um, in the next video we're going to be able to leverage this to um, assist us when we're doing our multiple object tracking and then when we do a more specific instance of that which is car counting so um, without further ado I'm going to end this video at this point and I'll see everybody in video for multiple object tracking